Hello, everybody. Joey the Truth Wagner with you, friends. Welcome into the Truth Serum, everybody. And, folks, this is something I know you've been waiting for. And it's something that I've been waiting for. But I've been so busy these past few weeks that we couldn't do it. But we can do this tonight. Uh, folks, this is the Week 17 NFL Picks. We will be uh, picking the winners to the games in Week 17 for the NFL. And if you're wondering why I'm saying we, it's because I have two special guests here. Double the special, not just one, two. I have Hollywood here with me, and I have Victor as well. He's back, uh, and we are very thrilled to have him back. It's been quite a while since he was here for the picks. Uh, ho ho ho! Hopefully, Victor, having you back will give this video the uh, spark it needs again. Never back like I never left. <laughs> Back like he never left. Okay, so let's get started here. And everybody, with it with it being week 17, all the games are on Sunday. There's no Thursday night, no Monday night, no Saturday night, no nothing. Just all Sunday. All Sunday. And it'll be a busy, busy day for CBS and Fox. For those two networks, you will see broadcasters you have never heard of before because they're going deep down the well. They're going down to their seventh broadcast team and down to their eighth broadcast team. I heard they might hire Joey. At, at this point, they should. At this point, they should. But let's get started. We'll start with Sunday in the early window. We will start with the team that I can never get right. Atlanta. Traveling to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Uh, They're gonna rest their their guys, aren't they, Tampa Bay? I'm not yeah, sure. Kind of they line. they might. That's a possibility. Uh, that's a that's a possibility, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Do they have anything to play for at all? I know if they win, if they win, I. If with a win, it would absolutely lock them into the fifth seed, which means they'd play the winner of the NFC least. Oh, wait, sorry, East. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, Victor, I think Tampa plays their starters. I think... I, I, I would think so, too, because, yeah, yeah. You want to you wanna get that number five spot locked up, uh, and Tampa does that with a win... If Tampa would lose and the Rams would win, then the Rams would get the five spot and Tampa Bay the six. So there is actually a lot to play for here. And because of that, I think Tom Brady goes off against a not-so-great Atlanta defense. Uh, but Ad Atlanta did play him tough a couple weeks ago. Uh, but I'm going Tom anyway. Tampa wins. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I think Tampa Bay wants to get going. And I could assume they'd rather go to whoever wins the least division instead of going to New Orleans or Seattle. So, yeah, you got to go Tampa Bay. I imagine if it's a blowout early, they're going to pull people. Okay, I'll go for Atlanta and make it interesting. Ooh. <laughs> wow. Ooh, going with Atlanta, Hollywood. They're so you unpredictable. Know, you know what? Hollywood's a different man. He is. He is. I've... I've learned, no matter what, n I'm not going with Atlanta. I pick Atlanta to win, you they lose. Tom. Come on. What? You never bet against Tom. Yeah, and I never bet. This is two rules here. That's why I'm going Tampa big time. Tom looked great last week. I know, they're getting going. Okay, now now this is, this is a very good game. This is a very good game here. Uh, and... Folks, we're going with the premise that Buffalo is going to be 12-3 and when this game is played because they are beating New oh, England, sure. crushing New England as we're recording this. Uh, so you have 10-5 and Miami, 12-3 and Buffalo. The game is in Buffalo. Uh, Miami clinches a wild card with a win. Buffalo with a win automatically clinches the two seed and I'll say this Victor the the two here's how it is with the two seed here uh you don't get a buy but if you have the two seed you if, two 
you get two home games, and it means you don't have to play Kansas City until the AFC Championship. So I'm really not sure here because I'm going back and forth. You know, how long does you know? You're you're confident on your pick. Uh, like I said, if I knew the Bills were playing their starters the whole game, I'd pick Buffalo. But with that, I'm not a a hundred percent sure. They probably will. Don't you think if that means that much? So I'll let you go first, Victor, because I just want to hear your insight here. <laughs> but to me personally. I think with this win tonight, I think Buffalo's con- I think whoever gets the second or the third, I think won't play Kansas City at all. And uh, I think the second and third seed are going to meet again if they both win their playoff game. So to me personally, I think uh, I'm leaning Miami because I think Miami has a lot to play for right now. They have everything to play for. This is their season, and I don't think I, I think Buffalo. They're coming off a short week headed to the playoffs. I think they feel so confident about themselves at the moment that they don't. I don't think that's, that seeding business means much to them, although it would be nice to get to home games. I got to go Miami, though. I think Miami is in well positioned. You know, they got a good quarterback situation. They got Tua and Fitzpatrick. Both those guys can give you stability in their well coach. I had to assume Miami wins this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking of that, I was. Isn't it something, uh, Tua with, uh, you know, Fitzpatrick right behind and, you know, both guys, you know, aren't, you know, bitter about the situation at all. They just come in, do their job. Yes. Yeah, yes, I, I I, have a feeling here. I think the Bills play their starters, but not the whole game. Who's being played? Is that, the think, game is in Buffalo. But home field, home field advantages here has basically been a wash. Road teams have almost won fi- almost exactly 50% of the games this season with no fans and such. Home field... Well, the become, weather, though, in Buffalo can be pretty bad. Yeah, weather would play a factor. I'm going to go Miami because that defense travels. That right. defense travels, and I don't think the Bills play Josh Allen and, and their starters the and whole it's game. It's a short week, too, for Buffalo. Too. Yeah, I'm going to... It's a short week. I think they're going to rest, guys. And to make a point back to the... I'm not trying to cut you guys off. To make a point back to the weather, if it is harsh conditions, a team that's usually... In, Warmer or warmer cities or dumps, they tend to play really crappy if they go up north. So that could play a huge factor. That would that would make me switch my pick to Buffalo. If the weather's bad, Buffalo. If it's just you know it's okay, Miami. Yeah, for the moment I'll go Miami. Uh, who do you have, Hollywood? It's really a flip of a coin. I say Buffalo. Okay, so he's got... pretty hot right now. Okay. 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 I believe me. I respect that pick. Uh, if I thought the Bills were playing their starters the whole game, I'd pick Buffalo. So, I completely get that. Uh, I, th- I think this one we'll pretty much all agree on here. Uh, Lamar Jackson and the Ravens travel to Cincinnati to take on uh, Brandon Allen and the Bengals. Uh, yeah, look at... Yeah, look at those Bengals uh, ruining their draft position. They could have they could easily finished with the, with the third pick and, uh, you know, got Joe Burrow a nice, great left tackle. But they won two weeks straight. Uh, like I said, I think we'll all agree on this one. Like, like I said, Ravens win and they're in. And I think the Ravens win and they are in. I think they run the ball down Cincinnati's throat. And I think they win quite handily, to be honest with you. This game, this matchup was a blowout, even with Joe Burrow in it. I bet it. the spreads are really high on that too. Who do you got for this one, Victor? Like I said, Baltimore's gonna skunk them. There's, that's that's just facts. Baltimore all the way. <laughs> Hollywood. Uh, Ravens. Who else? <laughs> and uh, to answer your question, let me look up a spread here. It's going to be huge. While we're waiting, you want to try to guess what the spread is? Because I haven't seen it yet. I'd say 12. Uh, What do you think? 14 and a half. I'm thinking 15 and a half. Let's see what it is. Although, since he's been playing well, Vegas might respect that. Wow, that's it? Eleven and a half. Wow. Close, wow. Man. Wow, okay. Okay, 
Next up, we have the Steelers at the Browns. Do you want to wait for this one or do it now? Let's do it right now. Let's okay, do it. we'll do this one right now. And, folks, this will be the game that Hollywood and I will be calling. Uh, we'll be right here in the Truth Serum well before the 1 p.m. kickoff. Uh, Steelers are 12-3. and They're the AFC North Division champs. Uh, Cleveland at 10-5. and Coming off the most Cleveland loss of Cleveland losses last week to the Jets. Uh, folks, the Steelers cannot get a bye, and they are either the two seed or the three seed. Uh, they can't fall to the four. And if I'm Pittsburgh, this is me, if I'm Pittsburgh, anybody of importance or substance I hold out of this football game... Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I would I would hold them out, and here's why. Uh, Steelers have not officially had a bye week this year. Uh, they lot they technically had it in week four with Tennessee, but that week they were prepped up until Friday, ready to play that game. And with the Ravens game Thanksgiving week, they were supposed to have that ten day break after playing on a short week. But that didn't happen. Uh, so they really haven't had time to exhale and breathe and rest. I know that Ben Roethlisberger's knees, I found out today that they are arthritic knees. So he's not 100%. So I'd give him the whole day off. He has arthritis in his knees. Yeah, they're arthritic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh and because of that, I would pick Cleveland because Cleveland has everything to play for win and they are into the playoffs for the first time in 18 years. Uh, remember, there's only so many guys you can rest. Uh, I would definitely rest Ben. I would rest... They're saying they may rest six of their offensive players. I'd rest Watt. I'd rest Hayward. I'd rest Minka probably to it, but I don't know how much depth they have to, you know, afford how many guys. Bro, has 10 sacks on the season, I think. He, he does. I'd sit very him, vital. I'd sit him to anyone of major importance. I would sit. You cannot afford injuries here, and you want to be going in fresh and healthy into the playoffs. The only person on the O-line that's sitting is Marquise. Everyone else is standing there on that O-line. That's how I feel. I agree with that, but because of that, I'd go Cleveland, and the Browns have everything to play for on Sunday. Yes. Um, I personally feel I would, I would, I don't think it's going to happen. I would like, as crazy as this, I would like our starters to play this game as if it was the third preseason game of the, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, like at, at, at most a half. Or even just a quarter like at that point, because I... The most... You know, something about the Steelers and... In buys, that just doesn't make sense. They'll probably yeah, play in the so, quarter. It's just <laughs> that I agree with. Uh, the I want the those guys to get rhythm. You know what I'm trying to say? I want them to have yes. that work with, and at least get some PT. Yes. But, the most I would want them to play is the first quarter, and that is it. Yeah, yeah. But I think you keep. If you, but I don't. I know in Mike Tom. I don't think he's gonna play Ben. So you go with Doug, and I think you. I think you go. I mean, you go Rudolph, and maybe get Dobbs and Doug involved too, just to have that PT for them for the year. But mm -hmm. um, you rest Pouncey, like I said. You, I think you keep the receiving core in there. I think you all of our running backs play. I think most of the defense plays except Watt, Hayward, Tuit, and Minka. Then then that's that. I would lean Cleveland. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if Pittsburgh wins. But I'm gonna go Cleveland because, like, like Miami, they're fighting for everything. Yeah. Uh, what's your pick, Hollywood? Oh, Cleveland by far. Okay. Oh, okay. But I mean, think of think of this narrative if it happened. Mason Rudolph beats Miles Garrett and the Browns and knocks them out of the playoffs. Think that's this. Why I, I kind of want something like that's what I'm saying. I would. That that storyline is amazing. But maybe for Steelers purposes, like who matchups in the first round, I think... I'd want to play Cleveland wild card of the playoffs. Out of all yeah. the teams, I'd want to play Cleveland. Because Baker, the, yeah. Baker is bad when he's pressured. And the Steelers can pressure Baker like no other team can. So, Do you think, do you think by 
tomorrow after his press conference will have an idea of what's going to happen Sunday. I would hope so. I would I I would hope so because you know any more information, any more tidbits I can get helps me with my prep and with everything. So I'd hope for me, I hope so. Okay, all right. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, and I can't believe that these two teams still somehow have a chance of winning their division, but they do. Right. And of course, <laughs> these two teams. These two teams will not know if they won the division until about 11:30 on Sunday night. It's the six and yeah, it's six and it's the six and nine Cowboys taking on the five and ten Giants. Uh, the 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 winner of this game can win the NFC East if Washington loses on Sunday night football. Victor, I'll let you start with this one. Although it's been against Crud, has played very well lately. I think they're playing the best football in the worst division in football right now. Um, um, I, I'm going to go Dallas to win this game. I think the Giants don't have much. I think Daniel Jones has lost a lot of his mobility that he had earlier in the year. Yeah, the ankle injuries and whatnot. Correct, correct. And... I think Dallas' offense might just be too much for New York to handle, so I'm going to go Dallas, and yeah, that's, that's, that's it. But I'm not very confident in any of these picks we're going to make for the NFC East. I'm not either. I'm not either. I, I'm leaning Dallas myself. Andy Dalton is at least a professional at quarterback. He's a pro. He's prepared. They have all of those receivers. Uh, yes. Yes. The Giants, like I said, their offense is not at full strength. Daniel Jones, he really relies on that mobility. He doesn't have it. I know the and I I, I I know for a stretch the Giants were playing really good defense and running the ball. But they they just look like a young team who has sort of run out of gas at the end of the year. Remember they were five and seven, they've lost three straight. Who the Giants. I'm going to go Dallas. They're playing better right now at the moment. But who the heck knows? Who are you going with, Hollywood? I'll go for America's team, too. They're not America's team! <laughs> we know... We know who the true America's team is. We know who that is. Uh, I hit a nerve. No, Randy Finkner hit a nerve on the first half Sunday. He hit a nerve. <laughs> next up, next up, we're still in the 1 p.m. window somehow. Uh, this wow. game means nothing. <laughs> nothing. Vikings at the Lions. Minnesota. Yeah, the Vikings. Vikings here. Yeah. Yeah, we're really not going to break this game down because it's, it's completely pointless, Vikings. <laughs> Sorry, Eric, but this game is completely pointless. Next, uh -huh. a cup two, two weeks ago, I would have said easy win New England, but not so fast. You got the Jets on a winning streak, baby, with Sam Darnold making plays. Jets in New England in Foxborough. Uh, Sam Darnold... <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Dar Sam Darnold making his case to stay in New York. Right, Victor? Hey, man, I, I personally like Sam, but uh, I think a Jets fan is punching their pillow at night. But uh, I, I, I assume New England, because, I mean, considering that they went, they're going to probably be 7 9 with what they had. So a lot of Bill Belichick, so I'm going to go New England, but. Who knows? <laughs> Who really knows? Both teams have nothing to play for. New York's out of the contention. What's your record? Two two and New England's going on. New York is two and thirteen. New England is six and nine. You have to go to New England. I'm I'm going New England. Uh, re remember, uh, remember, Victor. Uh, Bill Belichick can bring up the, you know, ghost of Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future with Sam Darnold. Uh, yes. 
Sam Darnold will see Ghost again. Uh, this New England will win this game not because of their uh, worst skill talent in the in the NFL. I'll say that. They will not win because of that. But I will go New England because of their defense. You're going New England, Hollywood? Right. Okay, all of us going to England. Next up, we've made it to the 425 window. Uh, okay. Okay, now this one has interesting written all over it. I never thought I would say this, but uh, Mitchell Trubisky with a win. Could put the Chicago in. Can put the Bears in the playoffs. They are playing Green Bay. Green okay. Bay secures... Yeah, Seat. Yeah, Green. Seat. Yeah, Green Bay secures the number one seed with a win. Oh, so they haven't, done it. Green Bay. Sorry. They haven't <laughs> yet. Green Bay gets the top seed with a win. Bears get a playoff berth with a win. Uh, and depending on how things fall, the Bears can make the playoffs with a loss if Arizona also loses. Okay. I think. I think. Uh, these, sen these scenarios are out of this world nuts. Uh, I'll start with this one, uh, and my analysis will be pretty simple. Aaron Rodgers against Mitchell Trubisky. I don't care that the Bears have scored four, have ha that the Bears have scored 30 points or more in four straight games for the first time since in fi over 50 years. <laughs> it's still Mitchell Trubisky with everything on the line, and you're giving me Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay. This shows a lot to how good Matt Nagy is as a coach. I mean, he's about to go probably 8-8 eight eight with not a quarterback. I think Chicago's one quarterback away from being something, but yeah, I gotta go with Green Bay, too. What's what's uh, the Bears' defense like? It's still pretty good? Still pretty good. It's the only reason they're 8-7. I'm gonna go with the Bears. Because Chicago, uh, Green Bay plays a good first half, and then they, they mess up. They played good a good 60-minute game last week, but usually they mess up in the second half. And I think the Bears need this, this win more. Well, the Bears do need this win more. That is a fact. I would argue Green Bay needs it more, but all right. Yeah, to have it in, have, have you know, all the NFC playoffs go through Lambeau, get the bye. Uh, That's a guaranteed Super Bowl. To me. Unless they somehow play Tampa. And then that's just a bad matchup for Green Bay. Okay, next up. Uh, yeah, this game would have meant something if the Raiders didn't choke last Saturday night. Uh, the Vegas Raiders going to Denver to take on the Broncos. Uh, I'll start this one, too. Uh, Vegas has choked again late season. Again, they've choked. It seems like when the wheels fall off, the wheels really fall off. Uh, do I think Vegas is a better team than Denver? I do. But Vegas, they went from having everything to play for to nothing. That was a heartbreaking loss last week against Miami. They thought they had it, game-winning field goal with 20 seconds, you know, go-ahead field goal with 20 seconds left. And then the then the uh, Ryan Fitz miracle play, no look, completion, getting grabbed by the face mask. Uh, the Raiders, just confidence-wise, are shot. I'll go with Denver. Game is oh, in wow. Denver. Yeah. Wow. You go with Denver. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going with Denver. Uh, wow. The Raiders, confidence-wise, they're they're they're. They don't have nothing to play for. They're shot. Mm, they're shot. How about Denver? Don't either. They don't. But Vegas, you know, went from being six and three and looking like they were a playoff team to now seven and eight. They're crushed. Emotionally. Being six and six and three with having the easiest remaining schedule left out of all these teams in the wild card hunt. Correct. Correct. Uh, Hollywood, who do you got here? Well, being from Vegas, they'll have all the high rollers fix the game. So, <laughs> there's nothing on mine. So, I'm going to go with Vegas. Okay, he's going Vegas. Who are you going with, Victor? I got Hollywood with that one. I'm Vegas still. Okay, I'm out on a limb on this one. Just what's like the spread, what's the spread on that game? 
Uh, let me look. Let me look. Uh, yeah, just like Atlanta. I'll, I'll just look here for the spread just to see what it is. As of now, it is Vegas by two and a half. Oh, that's not much of a line. Okay, next up, a game in the AFC South where we could see a division winner here. And this isn't your ordinary Week 17 matchup. You have Tennessee on the road going to Houston. And the reason why I'm saying that Houston isn't your, uh, you know, average 4-11 and team is because they have something that a lot of 4-11 and teams don't. And that is a great quarterback in Deshaun Watson, which makes any game possible for them. They look pretty close all year. Yes, yes, and... Uh, and uh, I don't mean to say this, Houston fans, but I will. You know right now that if they didn't make that Laramie Tunsil trade, they'd have the third pick as of today, the third pick in next year's draft. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. But instead, Miami has it. Goofy. Bro, Miami has the third. Oh, my God. Yeah, with this one, I like Deshaun. I really do. He's great. He's fun. But who's stopping Derrick Henry? If I remember right, I think these two teams played last year in Week 17. And yes. Derrick Henry ran for like a bazillion yards and couldn't be stopped. And I think that Derrick Henry runs Tennessee into the playoffs and gets that division. And I agree with you 100%. I remember watching that game Week 17 last year because it kind of meant something, but... Uh, for Steelers at least, but uh, yeah, definitely Houston. That's a lost cause. I mean, Bill O'Brien, he made sure that city would never recover for a good while. <laughs> yeah, going to Tennessee. Hollywood. Tennessee. Okay, so if Tennessee wins, it makes this next game irrelevant with a Tennessee win, and. We would most likely have an eleven and five team not make the playoffs. But they're going. They're they're playing at the wow. same. Time. They're playing so at the same time, so this team will be playing hard nonetheless. But they could eat, and I'm gonna pick this team to win, and they'll be eleven and five and not make the playoffs. Just saying. Whoa. Just saying. Just. Saying, uh, I'll say this, Victor. Jacksonville can actually play to win here and not have to worry about losing Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, you're right. They can definitely win this game to go out on a good note knowing you're about to get Trevor. Do you know that Jacksonville has lost, I believe they've lost 14 straight? They won their first game and they lost 14 straight, and I say it's 15 straight. Colts have everything to play for. Did we play Jacksonville this year? Still? No. No. No, yes, we did play Jacksonville. We beat them. What was that, 27-3 or something? Surprisingly by a blowout, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing, Victor, you're going Colts? Of course, without Hollywood, you're going Colts? Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now this one, I'm surprised this game's on Fox. Uh, uh, you're going to have the L.A. Chargers with Justin Herbert and Victor... You know my big, huge crush on how I love Justin Herbert as a quarterback. Love him. Yeah. Love him. He is, uh, the closest comp is, uh, Trevor Lawrence, but a rookie in the NFL this year. They both play very similar games. They're big, they're strong, they have cannons for arms, they're mobile, they can just do it all. And so it'll be the Chargers with Herbert going against Kansas City. They're 14-1. and one. The Chiefs have locked up the number one seed. Andy Reid has already said that Either some sit. key contributors will be sitting. And I would assume Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey, Cheetah, Hill to all be a part of that. And re remember, these two teams played week two. Herbert... Didn't find out he was playing until five minutes before kickoff and took Patrick Mahomes to overtime. He's the real deal. Yes. So with no Mahomes and no key guys for the Chiefs, Justin Herbert is somehow going to get the Chargers to 7-9 and nine this year. I go Chargers. Um, definitely. I think uh, 
without my homes in there, I think Herbert's going to definitely take care of business. I would say, honestly, Herbert has the potential to have a better career just off where he's at than the Trevor Lawrence coming in next year. So I got to go with the Chargers. And please, can we get this boy Justin Herbert some face wash? My man's always breaking out acne problems like crazy. Yeah, what's that stuff called? Uh, uh, proactive Neutrogena. Yes, yeah, yeah, proactive. <laughs> yes, proactive. You see it on the commercials all the time. Who do you, who do you have, Hollywood? I like the Chargers. Okay, okay, now, folks, we go here to a very intriguing game. This game is so wild, you're not going to believe it. And, folks, if there's any game I do in the 425 window... It is this one on Sunday. Uh, eight and seven Arizona Cardinals going to the nine and six Rams. But before we talk about this game, some big news here. Uh, Jared Goff underwent surgery for a broken thumb today. Whoa. And it's unlikely he plays. On his thrown hand? Yes. And I'm not done yet. Tyler Murray has a lower leg injury. What? And his status is up in the air for Sunday. And this is like a playoff game or a tank bowl. <laughs> and the winner of this game is automatically in. Right. Winner is automatically in. If Arizona loses, the Bears will be celebrating, but uh but yeah, this is a winner. Victor Hollywood. This is a winner take all game that could be between two backup quarterbacks. This is the only game we have in week 17 that's basically winning in, right? Yes. I'm For, gonna go ahead and gonna, I think D Hop, I think Kirk Tyler might play, might affect his mobility, but I'm gonna definitely got them win. I'll let you go here, Hollywood. I still gotta think. Is this Arizona here? The Rams. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Arizona, I guess. If, is Goff going to play at all? No, he is out. Oh, okay. So you're going Arizona. The Rams are going in the wrong direction right now. They lost two straight. One of those losses to the winless Jets at the time. Uh, I'm making this pick with the expectation that Kyler Murray plays. If Kyler Murray is ruled out, this would change my pick, but I'm going on the expectation that Kyler plays. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Rams have a great defense. Jalen Ramsey can shut D-Hop down. And if Kyler plays, even if he plays, he's not 100%. So he's not going to be completely mobile. He's going to have to worry about Aaron Donald right there in front of him. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm picking the Rams with a backup quarterback. Wow. Because of Aaron Donald and Ramsey. Defense. The, their defense, exactly. Exactly. Okay, next game in the 425 window. Uh... Saints travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. The Saints still have a path to get the number one seed, potentially. They'll be playing the same time as Green Bay, so I, I believe they'll be playing their starters here, Victor, and trying to get that one seed in case the Bears win. So, because of that, I'll go with the Saints to beat Carolina. But, I got Saints all the way to see but, but Carolina is one of the more difficult 5 and 10 teams to play against. I'll say that. For sure. Hollywood? What's the implications now? With... If the Saints win, they have a chance at the number one seed. Oh, they do. Yeah, I go for the Saints. Okay, so. next up. Uh, Russell Wilson. This is always, Victor, this matchup here over the last two, two and a half years. This has it's been kind of like I was in middle school too with the early days. Yes. Yeah, this has been over the last couple of years since I started doing NFL play by play here on YouTube. This has been one of my non-stealer 
favorite rivalry type games to watch and call. Seattle and San Francisco. Uh, like I said, Seattle also still has a chance at the top seed as well. Uh, it's in it's in play for Green Bay Saints and Seattle. Uh, I know that Green Bay gets it if if they just win. If if Green Bay just wins, it is done. Yes, for the other two. But there's still a lot to play for here for Seattle. I think San Francisco's going to come out tough. But they literally have no one at quarterback right now. I, I know they just signed Josh Rosen. So, a lot of instability there. I'm going to go Seattle. I'm going to go Seattle close, but I'll go Seattle. I go Seattle by a blowout. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, Hollywood? Uh, it's a spread on that game, yeah. Let me look. I think Seattle's a no-brainer. To, to win? Yeah. See, huh? Wow, okay. Woo! What okay. Seattle is only favored by four and a half. Wow. That's enough, though, in pros, four and a half. I, I'll go with Seattle. Okay, we've, we've made it. We've made it. We've we've made it, guys. In a pandemic year, we've made it to game number 256 in the NFL season. Games were rescheduled, but not one game was canceled or postponed to a different week. Let me say this real quick. We got to give the NFL a lot of props here. I mean, this, this season has gone by extremely fast. I think the NFL, I think the commission, I think they've handled this virus and trying to control it better than some governors in this country. Uh, you got to give the NFL a lot of prop. I mean, a lot of, a lot of, oh my God, a lot of credit. Okay, but this is the standalone game. And it is the Washington football team at 6-9 and nine going to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles that are 4-10-1. The Eagles cannot win the NFC East. The Eagles cannot make the playoffs. With with a win, Washington is in. With a Washington loss, the winner of the Cowboy Giant game would then win the division. Which we all picked Dallas. Yes, yeah, so that would mean the Cowboys. Which I don't I don't think would fare well for us, Victor, personally and professionally. Uh -huh. That would not fare well. Uh, Dwayne Haskins has been cut. And Alex Smith will get the start, correct? Yes, if he's healthy enough. He didn't play last week because he has a calf in injury. But all signs are pointing to Washington and Alex Smith being healthy. If Alex Smith cannot go, Taylor Heineke will go. <laughs> oh, man. I'll I, say I, this. I Yes, I'll say this. Jalen Hurts has been fun. He's made some plays for the Eagles. But the Eagles this year have really struggled at O-line. Washington's biggest strength is Chase Young, Kerrigan, and that D-line. I remember doing my prep for the Washington-Pittsburgh game, and Washington has four or four guys with at least five sacks. So it's a, com it's a complete balanced effort on that D-line. So that's a big edge for the football team. And with Alex Smith starting, I like Washington with Alex Smith starting because Alex Smith is used to these big games. He's smart. He's efficient. He's not going to lose the game. He's not going to give it away. He's not going to turn What kind of injury is he coming back from, Alex Smith? Oh, my God. A calf. Oh, a calf. Oh, that's it. So I'll go with Washington to win this game to win the NFC East to save my YouTube channel and lock Washington in to the Saturday 1 p.m. window on ABC. Washington. <laughs> You're going to hate me, bro. Well, you said that with such emotion. I think Philly... Offensively, with Jalen Hurts has some type of boost. I think Alex Smith is a little bit compromised. I think Philly still has pretty decent defensive line, just like Washington. But 
Yeah, that's I think Philadelphia is going to spoil Washington season. Whoa. Hollywood. Whoa, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going with, Hollywood? Oh, uh, I could, I'm, I got to go with Washington after what they did to the Steelers. Okay, so there you have it, folks. Our picks are made. They are in the books. The beauty of this is that we can change them before kickoff if we get any information that, uh, you know, changes our minds. But uh, Hollywood, thank you so much for being here for the picks. Uh, Victor, pleasure. thank you so much for being back on the picks. It made the picks a lot more enjoyable. Of course. And, uh, and here's the nice thing. Next Monday, there's no game. So we can do our wild card round picks next Monday. Well, there it is, everybody. Those are our, our picks for Week 17. In the chat, in the comments below, who do you think is going to win? Would love to hear what you think. Again, Steelers Nation, NFL Nation, make sure to click that like button, subscribe to the channel. We are trying to get closer to 7,500 subs. So there you have it from the Truth Serum. Joey the Truth Wagner signing off. Have a great night, a great week. Uh, folks, it'll be a busy week for me. Probably e probably Wednesday I'll be doing an NBA game. And then Friday's the college football playoff. Two games. So see you then for all of that.